Hello, and welcome to this webinar on using IBM Watson and the power of artificial intelligence from Delphi and or C++ Builder. My name is Al Manorino, and I'm one of the Embarcadero software consultants. For the agenda, on this webinar, we plan to look at how to leverage the power of machine learning from Delphi and or C++ Builder with the IBM Watson Artificial Intelligence Services. This webinar will cover using the IBM Watson REST APIs. The IBM Watson is a cooperative environment with artificial intelligence tools that you can use to collect and prepare training data and to design, train, and deploy machine learning modules. On this webinar, we will specifically look at two of the IBM Watson artificial intelligence services. We'll look at the visual recognition service and the tone analysis service, and we'll also look at Watson machine learning. But before we dive into using Delphi and or C++ Builder with the IBM Watson artificial intelligence REST services, we'll take a quick refresher look at what's possible with Delphi and or C++ Builder for the integration with web and or REST services. We'll have a quick review on how to integrate Delphi and or C++ Builder with backend services to provide access to data and enhance the Delphi and or C++ Builder multi-device user experience. Delphi and or C++ Builder has different technologies to integrate with web and REST services, including the HTTP native client library, accessing REST APIs, and using the cloud API framework for integrating with cloud web services available in Amazon and Azure clouds. Specifically, Delphi and or C++ Builder includes and integrates with these technologies, the HTTP native client library, SOAP clients, REST clients, backend as a service clients, and cloud API. Now, the HTTP client library is the foundation for the other client components, including SOAP, REST, backend as a service clients, and the cloud API clients. So this means, for example, if we were going to use the REST client library for integrating with REST services, internally, the REST client library are implemented using the native HTTP client library. As an example, let's take a look at a Delphi application that uses the net HTTP client components get method to return data from a HTTP URL. The TNet HTTP client component has different methods for executing different types of HTTP requests that correspond to their names. For example, if we want to make a GET request, we need to use the GET method. For a POST request, there is a POST method, and so on. Here's our Delphi example to show how to use the NET HTTP client GET method to return data from a HTTP URL. Now this HTTP URL returns blood data downloaded from the Protein Data Bank website, which is rcsb.org. Basically just a text file gets returned from this URL. So looking at the code from this get data button click, we see that we are using the get method from the net HTTP client library, and we're saving the return data as a memory stream. Next, if we receive a, re a response status code equal to 200, that, it, that implies that the response contains a payload that represents the status of the requested resource. Now, an error message usually is not a representation of that resource. So if something went wrong while processing the get, we would receive a status code in the 400s or the 500s, meaning something went wrong, and here we can use the HTTP response.status code to display any error message other than the 200 OK status. And finally, to display the data from the URL, we are using the load from stream method from the memo component to display the data in the memo. Let's run this application and see how it works. So here's our application running. So when I click on the get data button, it calls the net HTTP client get method to return data from our HTTP URL. And as we see here, the data gets returned, downloaded, and displayed on our memo. So that worked all just fine. 
Next, let's look at how to use Delphi and or C++ Builder to access the IBM Watson Tone Analyzer service. The IBM Watson Tone Analyzer service uses linguistic analysis to detect emotional and language tones in written text. But before you can begin to use any of the IBM Watson AI services, you must first create an IBM Cloud account, and that's at ibm.com slash cloud. You then log into your IBM Cloud, and you can add your Watson machine learning services. And this will give you your necessary API key, instance ID, and base URL from the service credentials tab. So here we see in my IBM Cloud, I have the Tone Analyzer added as one of my services. So here are my steps to log into my IBM Cloud using my user ID and my password. And we see my dashboard shows me I have two, two services. So under services, I have the language translator service and the tone analyzer service. Clicking on the tone analyzer service, this gives me the API key and my base URL I need to use to connect to this IBM Watson tone analyzer service. And clicking on the link for the REST API documentation for this tone analyzer service, here I can see the service endpoint I have to use as my base URL. So based, so service endpoint by location, I will use this Dallas service endpoint by location as my base URL call to access the IBM Watson Tone Analyzer service. And for authentication, I read that the IBM Cloud is migrating to token-based identity and access management IAM authentication. So this means when I pass in my API key, I need to use API key for my username and the value of the API key as the password. Let me also mention the IBM Cloud lets you create a free account that lets you develop for free and no credit card is required. So with this free account, you have access to the full catalog of IBM services, including the artificial intelligence services we are using in this webinar. So that's pretty cool. So now that we know the base URL and how we need to authenticate to the IBM Watson Tone Analyzer service, let's look at a Delphi application on how we can do this. Here is the Delphi or C++ Builder application we will use for this tone analysis service. So for this application, we will also be using the net HTTP client component. And looking at the code, if you recall from the REST API documentation, here is the base URL we will be using to access the tone analysis service. Also recall from the REST API documentation that we need to use identity and access management IAM authentication for the tone analysis service. This means that this service will ask for a username and a password. To help us with this authentication, the net HTTP client component has an event called on auth event that lets me set the username and password needed for authentication. So since I need to use IAM authentication, I'm setting my username equal to API key and I'm setting my password equal to the value of my API key. So let's run this application and see how it works. So let's first use a happy, joyous text sample. So the text we're going to send to the IBM Watson Tone Analyzer is this. Your TED Talk on reporting was amazing. I have an idea on taking your analytics to the next level. What's the easiest way to get 10 minutes on your calendar? So clicking on the IBM Watson Tone Analysis button, this does the net HTTP client dot get call, and this returns this JSON array in our memo component for the results of the tone analysis. 
Now, Delphi and C++ Builder has wonderful JSON classes and methods for parsing the JSON results that we can use. But instead, for this application, I'm going to use this nice Delphi to JSON class utility created by PTAR. And you can get this utility from this GitHub link. Some of the main features of this utility is that it generates the Delphi classes based on our JSON string and it's built entirely on the runtime library, so no external dependencies are needed, so it's cross-platform, and it accepts any valid JSON string, no matter how complex the object is, and it visualizes the structure of the JSON objects in a tree view, like we see on this slide. So we see our tone analysis JSON has a root node called document tone, with nodes called tones and sentences tone with attributes like score, tone ID, tone name, sentence ID, and text. And the Delphi to JSON class utility generates for us the complete Delphi unit, both the declaration and the implementation based on our tone analysis JSON string that I called my tone unit that we will use in our application to parse and display the tone analysis results. Plus, this Delphi to JSON class utility has many more features that you can look at for yourself. So here's the JSON to Delphi class utility running in my Rad Studio 10.3. I pasted in my tone analysis JSON that got returned from our sample joyous text from the IBM Watson tone analysis service. We have a button to validate the JSON online, another button to visualize the JSON in a tree view like we see here, and another button to preview the Delphi class from the JSON string that I'm going to call my tone unit. So here is our tone unit created from our IBM Watson tone analysis JSON that I'm going to add into our tone analysis application to use to parse and display our tone analysis results. Here we see in the Rad Studio 10.3 IDE the tone unit created from the JSON to Delphi JSON class utility. As you can see, it has from JSON string and to JSON string functions for each of the nodes in the returned tone analysis JSON. For example, here's what the sentences tone class from JSON string function looks like. And here's what the sentences tone class to JSON string looks like. To store the data from the tone analysis string, I'm using these three client data sets in my application. I have a client data set called Tone Master, and this will store the attributes called Tone, Score, and Tone ID. I have a second client data set called Sentences, and this will store the attributes Text and Sequence ID. So this will give us separate tone analysis results for each sentence in our text to be analyzed. And I have a third client data set called Sequence Tone. And this, and this I will use to store attributes tone name, score, and sequence ID of the text that is tone analyzed. And to display the data, I'm using this tone results unit that has three string grids. String grid one on top, string grid number two in the middle, string grid number three on the bottom to display the data from the three client data sets. And using visual live bindings, we see how the client data sets are connected to each of the three string grids. So the tone master client data set will get displayed on string grid number one. The sentences client data set will get displayed on string grid number two. And the sequence tone client data set data will get displayed on string grid number three. And to parse the data and display the tone analysis results from the tone analysis JSON and store the data into the client sets, I'm using the 
tone unit that we created from the JSON to Delphi JSON class utility. So for example, here we see how we can get the root tone by calling the from JSON string method from the T root tone class from the tone unit. And then for each node, like tones and sequence, we can parse the JSON data and store their values into their client data sets. So that's very cool. So now let's run this application again, and this time we'll use a sad text sample, and we'll see how the parse and display tone analysis results functions work. So here's our Delphi or C++ Builder IBM Watson Tone Analyzer application running. This time I will select some sad text. So the sad text we are going to analyze is team. I know that times are tough. Product sales have been disappointing for the past three quarters. We have a competitive product, but we need to do a better job of selling it. Now clicking on the IBM Watson Tone Analysis button, this returns for us the IBM Watson Tone Analysis JSON results. Looking at the JSON, we see we have a root node called document tone, and then we have a, a node called tones that has a score of 0.6 with a tone ID of sadness and a tone name of sadness. So this tells us that the text that we are analyzing is sad text. We also have another tone ID called analytical with a score of 0.8 and it has a tone name of analytical. We also have a node called sentence tone, which will analyze each sentence in our text and give us results. So now when I click on the parse display tone analysis, we see our IBM Watson tone analysis results on our three string grids. So the top string grid gives us attributes of tone, score, and tone ID. So we see the tone is of sadness with a score of 0.6 with a tone ID of sadness. And the analytical tone has a analytical score of 0 0.8 with a tone ID of analytical. And then for each sentence in our text, sentence ID 1, sentence 2, sentence 3, we get individual analysis on tone name, score, and sequence ID. So all of that works just fine. Next, let's look at using the IBM Watson Visual Recognition Service and the power of artificial intelligence from Delphi and or C++ Builder. The IBM Watson Visual Recognition Service uses deep learning algorithms to analyze images for scenes, objects, faces, and other content. The IBM Watson Studio provides a collaborative environment in the cloud where you can work with your images and your visual recognition custom models. But before we can use the IBM Watson Visual Recognition Service, we first need to provision an instance of the Visual Recognition Service using the IBM Watson Developer Console using this link like I did on this slide. After doing this, you will get your needed IBM Watson Visual Recognition Service credentials, specifically your API key and the URL that you will need to use the IBM Watson Visual Recognition Service. And clicking on the Services Credentials link in the IBM Cloud panel here on the left, this will give you your auto-generated service credentials in JSON format to use the IBM Watson Visual Recognition Service like we see here on this slide. And from the REST API documentation for the IBM Watson Visual Recognition Service, you get the details for service endpoints and the authentication needed to use the IBM Watson Visual Recognition Service. So for our example, we are going to pass a bearer token in an authentication header, and I will show you the code on how I did this. And from the REST API documentation, we see that these are the base URLs we need to use for each of these different types of visual recognitions. Visual, faces, explicit, and food. And for example, the URL for explicit uses a set of built-in models to provide highly accurate results without training 
whether an image is inappropriate for general use. And for the food URL, this provides highly accurate results specifically for images of food items. And for authentication, as we just mentioned on the last slide, we will need to provide our access token. Now we can generate an IAM token using our API key obtained from our provisioned Watson machine learning instance. I get my API key from the service credentials tab of the IBM Watson machine learning service instance that we just saw on a previous slide. And here in code, we set the authorization parameter using the custom headers method of the HTTP client library component. And this is how we can pass our bearer token in an authorization header. Let's now take a look at this Delphi or C++ builder example on how we can use the IBM Watson visual recognition service to do a visual recognition of an image. Here's our application in Red Studio 10.3. Let's first run this IBM Watson visual recognition application and see how it works. Then we'll look at the code for the details. First, I'll select visual as the type of visual recognition we want to use. Then I'm going to select an image of myself. So here's a picture of me. Next, I'm going to click on the execute button and this will do the net HTTP client post of my URL visual with my image, passing in authentication also. And we see here that the IBM Watson visual recognition service returns JSON results with classes, score, and type hierarchy. And using the help of the same JSON to Delphi JSON class utility, we used in the last tone analysis app, we parsed the JSON results and we displayed the results like this. So as you can see here for score, you will see a number between zero and one. And this represents the confidence Watson has in the returned classification based on the training data for that classifier. The API classifies for all classes in the classifier, but you can adjust the threshold to return only results above a certain confidence factor. So for example, if the search type was faces for face recognition, the visual recognition is capable of face detection, detecting the presence of a face, but not face recognition, identifying individuals. So for the image of my face, the IBM Watson Visual Recognition Service thinks I'm an official adult person. So that's okay. Let's run the application again and select another image and let's see what the Visual Recognition Service returns. So back to the selection tab, select an image. This time I'm going to select the image of Guinea Rometty So here's an image of Miss Guinea Rometty, and Guinea Rometty's real name is Virginia Marie Rometty. She is an American business executive. She's the current chair, president, and CEO of IBM, and the first woman to head the IBM company. Clicking on the execute button, the IBM Watson visual recognition service returns these classes with these scores and these type hierarchy. So the visual recognition service believes this image to be a, a female person that is official and associated with the treasury, secretary of state, and a resident commissioner. Let's now take a look at this Delphi or C++ builder example on how we can use the IBM Watson visual recognition service to do a visual recognition of an image. First, we have our constants for the base URLs we need to use for each search type, visual, faces, explicit food, and also for the tone analysis. Next, we will select the image we want to use to send to the IBM Watson visual recognition service. And as I mentioned before, the IBM Watson visual recognition service also requires authentication using our access token from our IBM cloud account. So when we click on our execute button, we will use this do authenticate function
And this code will get us our access token by using the HTTPS IAM.bluemix.net slash identity slash token URL. And this will get us the value of our access token that, will, that we will need for authentication using the IBM Watson Visual Recognition Service. Let's go back to our design tab, click on the execute button. And here in code is how we use the HTTP client custom headers property to set the authorization parameter equal to our access token. So now that we have the base URL and our authorization access token, we will use the post HTTP request method and pass in our URL visual that includes our authentication and the image for our visual recognition. And this will return the interface for HTTP response. And to process the JSON response, we are using this process content procedure. And this content process procedure uses a client data set called results that creates fields for the return JSON like gender, score, and age, and then we save those values in our client data set. And similar to how we use the JSON to Delphi JSON class utility for our tone analysis JSON, here we also use the same JSON to Delphi JSON class utility to create our recognize unit and our faces unit Delphi classes from the return JSON from the IBM Watson visual recognition service that looks like these units. So here's the faces unit and here's the recognize unit. And each of these units has the from JSON string and the to JSON string methods for all the nodes of the visual recognition JSON returned from the IBM Watson visual recognition service. And similar to what we did with the tone analysis service, we can now use the recognize unit and the faces unit classes to parse the return JSON from the IBM Watson visual recognition service and get the values from the JSON. Like for example, we can get the T root faces class by calling the from JSON string method of the T root faces class from the faces unit. Then for each node in the return JSON string, like face and classes, we can parse the JSON and store their values in our client data set using code like this. Then we display the results of our IBM Watson visual recognition service from our image on a tab sheet on a DB grid control. So now that we have some details on how we implemented this application, let's run this IBM Watson visual recognition application one more time. And this time we'll search for a food type. Select the selection tab. Select an image. I will select this fruit basket image. Click on execute. So for this fruit basket image of search type equals food, the visual recognition service returns these class items with these scores and these type hierarchy. So the visual recognition for this food believes it sees diet food, bananas, honeydew melons, and golden delicious apples, and Granny Smith apples. So all of this is very cool. Recall me saying earlier that the Visual Recognition Service API comes with pre-trained models that can accurately detect foods in addition to objects, faces, scenes, and colors. So as we see here, the API was able to detect bananas, melons, and apples from our fruit basket. 
So that worked just fine. IBM Watson artificial intelligence use cases. So there are many interesting use cases on how people are using IBM Watson's AI services. You can visit this website to get the details on how Watson artificial intelligence is changing how business gets done. So here are three quick examples. First one is a vehicle damage inspection with visual recognition. An auto glass auto body repair shop was able to create a custom visual recognition model that can assess type, location, and severity of damage on an automobile. So now their customers can upload a photo of the car damage to receive an automatic quote in a matter of seconds. Second use case is ESPN Fantasy Football League. So Watson's artificial intelligence can look at millions of unstructured data sources like news feeds and analysts and fan chatter to deliver relevant insights on players. And armed with this information, you can decide who you should play and who might need to ride the bench in a given week. Third use case is quality customer service. So banks, for example, are using IBM Watson's AI to find solutions to speed up everyday processes and allow client advisors time to address more complicated problems. Resources. If you are interested in trying to use IBM Watson and the power of artificial intelligence from Delphi and or C++ Builder, here are some links to get you started. So first, before you can use any of the IBM Watson AI services, you first need to create a free IBM Cloud account. Then, here are links to get you started using the Tone Analysis Service and the Visual Recognition Service. And then next, to help you parse and display the return JSON data from the IBM Watson services, take a look at PTAR's Delphi JSON to Delphi Clash utility that I used in my applications in this webinar. Next, you have a few technologies in Delphi and or C++ Builder to access REST API services, like the Tnet HTTP client library and the REST client library. So in this webinar, I use the Tnet HTTP client library since the HTTP client library is the foundation for the other client components, including SOAP, REST, Backend as a Service, and Cloud API clients. And lastly, give me a few days and I'll post both the Delphi and the C++ Builder versions of the applications I used in this webinar on my Embarcadero blog site. And lastly, to summarize what we hope to have covered on this webinar was one, you can easily use Delphi or C++ Builder to integrate with web services. Delphi and or C++ Builder makes it easy to integrate with backend services to provide access to data and enhance the VCL or multi-device user experience. With Delphi and or C++ Builder, you have different technologies to integrate with backends, including the HTTP native client library, SOAP clients, REST clients, backend as a service clients and cloud API. And secondly, we got to see how to use the IBM Watson and the power of artificial intelligence with Delphi and or C++ Builder to connect and use the AI services available in IBM Watson. This ends the time I had for this webinar. Let's now open up this webinar to any questions you may have. All right. All right. Thank you all for attending this webinar on Watson's AI services. Online today, we have Al Manorino, our presenter, who will be able to answer all of your questions. If I am here, Mary, just checking if you can hear me. I can indeed. Awesome. Wonderful. I've just posted a link to your blog post that has a copy of that slide deck, the code samples for Delphi that you used, and all these resources mentioned in the webinar. So. Thank you for doing Oh, of course. All right. So it looks like we, we're starting to get quite a few questions. So let's start with the first one, the API key that you showed. Uh, they said someone suggested maybe blurring that out. Yes. Um, yes. Well, it's a, it was a free IBM Cloud account, so feel free to use my API key. 
<laughs> Great. Nobody will have to have to worry then. Awesome. Right. Just take the, take the samples I posted and run them as is, and they should just work. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So next question had to do with the utility JSON to class uh, download. It looks like someone may have had a problem getting access to that link, but if you go through the link that I just posted on uh, to in the chat message for everyone, you should be able to open it up directly from there. And again, a list of all of Al's resources have been posted there as well. Yes, that's a that's a wonderful utility to know about. It'll take any 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 JSON, no matter how complicated it is, and create the Delphi classes from it. And as you know, you can use those Delphi classes in a C++ builder application also. It'll create the necessary header and uh, implementation files for you also. That is really cool. I'm going to have to download this myself. Um, all right. So next question that we had from Dimitri is, can you execute faces on the food image? Uh, you can. So you can pick a food image and and use the faces type. So the JSON that gets returned is is one of two types. So depending on the the image and the and the type you pick, it returns one of two different types of JSON that I can remember. One has a top node of images, <clears throat> thinking it's an image and how to parse it. And the other one, like for food, will return something specific. I, I think the top node was called classes and it has all the different class identifiers. So so the, uh, the, the built-in model in IBM Watson will do what it thinks it can do to figure out if your image is, uh, is visual or if it's a face or if it's a type food. And it'll do the best it can to try to let you know what it thinks it is. Fantastic. All right, we have a comment on an amazing webinar. Thank you for all the wonderful references to e to getting started easily. Yes, I even I appreciate that, Al. Thank you. That was that was my pleasure for doing this. Yes. Yes. Uh, do we have access to the recording and the source code? Yes, you do. Um, we posted a link to Al's blog post that has all the code that was used today for Delphi. And as he said earlier, uh, C++ Builder will be up and running soon. And then you should, within the next few days, be getting a link to this recording as well. All right. Yes, and again, as repeated, all the code will be made available along with the slide deck as well. All right, we've got one comment. It seems that nowadays many companies try to state that an OCR cloud service they provide is done by AI, according to you, Al, um, is an automatic character recogni recognition accounting post and codes can be done without human interactivity, or is this just marketing again? So it sounds like yeah, the question yeah. is, can this so be good. done without people, or do we still need to require human interaction? I would say you still need to require, well, if you, if you look at the results of this, these two IBM Watson services I provided, there's a there was a category called score, which gives you a number between zero and one, which is Watson's confidence on what it thinks is a face or what it thinks is a banana. So it was never it was never 100% confident that it, it saw a face or it saw a banana. So you got to continue to teach it and train it so it really knows what's a face or or what's a banana or what's an apple. So these uh, these services do come with a set of built-in models to hopefully provide as high accurate results that it can without having to do any training of the model. But there's always going to be some human interaction, I think. I'm not sure if the artificial intelligence will ever get to that point of giving, you know, 100 percent confidence on everything it thinks it sees or or thinks it is. So good. Good question. I think when it does, I'm going to be afraid as well. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah we, don't, we don't want to make AI smarter than we are. That, that could be bad. Yes, they've made several movies about that in the more recent years. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so we have a question here on is the recognition service able to provide the location such as the XY coordinates of a recognized object? So where's the banana in the picture? So good question. So I did not get into that many details on on what the AI service is capable of doing, but I'll, I'll take that as an action item to see if it's able to do that and I'll let everyone know. Awesome. Let's see, when it looks like, Al, you may need to be providing access for quite a few people to uh, get access yeah, to I just, your slides. I just, I just realized now all those links I posted all come back to me leading access to it. So I'll, uh, I'll modify that, that post and and change those links to 100% you know, shareable links. So as long as you got the link, you don't need me to grant you access to get them. So apologize for that. So all that noise you're hearing is everybody emailing me asking for access. So again, I apologize for that. All right. So let's see. Yep. More permissions. All right. I I find that I need to disable range checking to run SOAP requests with the HTTP rec uh, request. Is this a known issue? Uh, not, not that I'm aware of, but like I said, I'll, I'll take that as an action item too, if that's something we know about or, or if there's a workaround or if it's been fixed in some other version of the product. So thank mm -hmm. you for that question and I'll follow up with that for you. Excellent. Uh, based on your IB Watson, IBM Watson experience, Al, can you compare it at all with maybe the Google services? So this was my first time looking at this IBM Watson service, so I got limited knowledge of what it can and cannot do. So I, I do not know, but I'll take a look at that also and let you know what I find. All righty. Are the visual recognition models that are used in this presentation um, pre-built in the IBM Watson AI service, or did you have to create uh, all or a lot of these models yourself? No, so the good news is uh, all of the models are already pre-built. They're pre-built models in, in Watson for, for visual, uh, faces, explicit, and food. So the good news is if you you know if you pick like food or if you pick uh, the other one that was more intense was so I know food for example provided some very highly accurate results especially for images of food so yes yeah, so to answer your question these all these models were pre-built already for the for the two services I used the visual recognition service and the tone analysis service. Uh, it looks like this class was made from the JSON responses. How can we improve them? Um, every Do they have to recreate the classes every time? So those, for, so from that JSON to Delphi class utility, you give it the, you give it the JSON and it will it will create the uh, the Delphi class from it. So you have access to that Delphi uh, source code from the class and you can modify that class. But anytime, anytime new, new JSON gets uh, delivered, then you would need a new you know, Delphi class that corresponds to that, uh, to that JSON. All so right. at least I saw in all of my, all of my examples with the IBM Watson services, the JSON got, that gets returned, it was always of a consistent format that, make, that made it easy to use the, uh, the Delphi classes that got created from the utility. Okay, awesome. Uh, next question, does Watson return areas of the image for each type of item it finds in the image? So say for example, a person eating an apple, does it face does it return then the face area of the person and then also return a separate kind of apple area to figure out what type of apples being eaten for instance uh, good question so I never tried an image that had both faces and uh, and food on it so I will try that myself and 
see how smart the visual recognition service is to see if it can detect both faces and, and food in the same image. Awesome. Um, this is a this is a funny question. Then, uh, did you try to apply this to the stock market, Al, for for <laughs> analyzing media? That'd be interesting. <laughs> I I have not, but now you've given me something to to think about doing. <laughs> awesome. Yeah that 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 would be a very in my opinion that would be very interesting to see what Watson has to say about our about the stock market. That's. Yes, I know. For like for 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 tone analysis, it'll uh, you know if there's some chatter on people thinking what stock to buy, it should be able to pick that unstructured data up and kind of determine if it's a stock is a good choice to buy or a good choice to sell. So something mm -hmm. something to think about doing. Yeah. Right, and it looks like Miguel also posted. It is worth to mention that. The Delphi JSON utility is good, but only for fixed JSON. Um, saying that for generic responses, you might even be able to get away with just plain JSON. Um, that's an interesting comment there, Miguel. That's correct. So yeah, so you know, both Delphi and Seabill have some amazing JSON classes and methods for parsing JSON. So you can always use those. I uh, I came across that nice. Uh, utility from PTAR that that did what I needed so I used it that's yeah I always find I just kind of go out and try to see if I can find something that's already been done or that I can modify so that it makes life a little bit easier shortens that time on trying to write out my own code yes all right, and it looks like so far that's the end of our questions. Uh, does anyone else have any questions that they'd like to add into the chat box? I'll give another minute or so. Um, but in the meantime, Al, is there anything else uh, that you wanted to mention or add on from from the video? Uh, let's see. So as I as I was going through this, you know, so. So the uh, you know, so basically this IBM Watson is basically a REST API. So like with all REST APIs, as as long as you know the uh, the base URL to use and and what parameters to pass it and what type of authentic authentication it needs, that's pretty much all you need. Those those three main parameters. And for some of the requests, we had to do a post, and for some of the requests, we had to do a get. And when I got for the uh, for the visual recognition service, we, I needed to post the uh, the URL with the image, and then when when you're looking at the Embarcadero doc wiki for the for the post method of a uh, net HTTP client, you're going to see several uh, overloads. And then this occurred to me that our net HTTP client post was very similar to Indy's HTTP post. And that reminded me that many of Embarcadero's HTTP and REST framework designs were inspired by Indy's components, since that's what Delphi and Seabill used before we created our own frameworks, like our HTTP client library and our REST client library. So that was a nice little refresher for me to, to realize that. Again, thank you, Al, for putting on this amazing webinar session here. Uh, it was my pleasure doing it. So now I'm going to have to find some more images and and run them through Watson and see what it has to say. Especially if I can mix, you know, faces and and food and and see what the uh, artificial intelligence brings back. Yeah, that's actually that sounds pretty cool to see if it would actually be able to determine between both and then yeah. you still run still run that that same type of further analysis on both of those. Um, what, what I was able to see that it can uh, like visual recognition, uh, it can it can detect that the image is a is a face or a person, but it does not do facial recognition. You watch all these TV crime shows where it can do all this facial recognition. I don't think IBM Watson's visual recognition on faces is uh, can get to that you know face recognition part, but it can tell if the image is 
is a person. So it knows how to detect the face that it's a person, but it will not do facial recognition. Well, maybe maybe one day, you know, it one will. One day, sure. Yeah. I'm sure it's in there. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Maybe that's because I was using the free account. Maybe if I used the paid account, it would add facial recognition. Oh, maybe so. That would that would definitely uh, throw a wrench in anyone's <laughs> plans for you know world domination. <laughs> they already know your face. Um, so it looks like there was a question um, maybe already discussed, but is there a reason why the HTTP net client and the content type property is set to image JPEG? Because that's uh, those are the types of images I was uh, sending to the to the service. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, next question that we have is that there someone is using the visual recognition in a fruit image and the JSON that returns is the same in structure. Um, will that still return if it were, for instance, a streak image? Or, I'm sorry, a stake image? A stake image. Oh, good question. Yeah, good question. So, yeah, I'll have to, I'm going to have to send some mixed mixed images to the service and see what it comes back with. So I'd, I'd be curious to know if it sees more more meat than fruit. Will it just think it's all meat and not some fruit, or will it know both fruit and uh, and meat? So good question. I don't know what the artificial intelligence service will, will bring back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something that probably anyone um, – can even try out for themselves. I mean, with the source code that we've that you've provided, you know, everybody should be able to start their free account yeah. and just if you if you got 20 or 30 minutes, you know, just give it a shot for yourself. Throw every image you can. Um, will we be doing such webinars for more prolific, such as uh, like Amazon's AWS services, including the Echo voice services. That sounds like a good. Uh, that sounds like a good upcoming uh, webinar to do. So I'll, I'll pass it through our marketing folks, and maybe that'll be one of the uh, future webinars we will do. So thank you for that suggestion. Yeah, that sounds that sounds pretty cool. I have three of them where I live, and I can't use the name without making all of them go off. So that would be pretty cool to to build more uh, to see how to integrate those services with with our current Delphi and C++ Builder offerings. Another question we have is IBM AI is quite good, um, but what about something such as the Azure Cognitive Services? Uh, do you have any experience with that, Al? So I do not. So, but I suspect if it's you know if it's if it's a REST-based service, you know, it should be able to work the same to be able to connect to it and and call those uh, REST APIs. And assuming it returns back JSON, it should uh, should work and function the same. But no, I don't have any experience in in that specific service. All right. Well, it looks like that seems to be the end of our questions. Um, and again, Al, I thank you for being able to hop on and uh, and answer all of these questions for, for everyone that joined us today. All right. My pleasure. So, yeah, give me like a day or two and I'll uh, update the links on my blog post so you don't need my uh, my permission to, to download the, the slides or the source code. And we'll have both the Delphi and, and C Builder versions up there for you to uh, study the code yourself. Great. Well, again, thank you, everyone, for joining this webinar. And again, thank you, Al. All right. Everybody have a great day. Thank you.